about the Twitter decision, uh, a couple of things. First of all, uh, I'm glad it happened because you're facing an emergency that's a danger, you know, it's a danger to the Republic. And if you don't act, there's going to be further incitement. And so the actual decision I was, you know, very supportive of. But uh, it does seem to me that it also demonstrated how powerful Twitter is because, you know, we haven't heard from the president ever since they made, made that decision and they've taken away, you know, his major uh, bullhorn. And it does seem to me, and, and so this is why I don't like the idea of the platforms themselves doing content moderation. I think that that is a, that's a short uh, term stopgap kind of measure that in a national emergency is acceptable, but it is not a long-term solution uh, because, and this is where scale matters. I mean, this is what we've been thinking about in this little Stanford working group on platform scale that, um, you know, if you're, if you're in a competitive media market, you can act as a media company like the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal and moderate the content that's on your platform. If you are as large as Twitter or Facebook or Google, you're more like one of the networks back in the 1950s and 60s, where you really have a major ability to shape the information and the way that people think about things. And so even though the First Amendment protects the right of these private companies uh, to moderate content and, and you know, publish what they want, they are de facto playing a, a quasi-public role as the main channel of political communication. And I just don't think that that's legitimate uh, in a democracy.